Hello and welcome to Slightly Nostalgic. My name is Griff and we have watched Avatar The Last Airbender Season 2, Episode 1, The Avatar State. So this is the one where a crazy earthbender general tries to get Aang to be able to control his avatar state because he wants to use that during the war. But things get more and more extreme to the point of just endangering everybody and it's crazy. And then over on the other side, Azula is here. We get to see her, what kind of horrible person she is right away. And uh, she tells Zuko and Iroh that the Fire Lord wants them back but it turns out she was actually just taking them prisoner and they escape. So the episode starts out with some nightmares that Aang is having about the things he did during the big final battle at the end of the last season. And I think it's interesting that they did, it's kind of cool that they didn't just move on like everything was fine, even though he didn't really, they didn't show him killing anybody or anything like that. Like he just kind of pushed the ships out, but there was still a lot of mayhem and it was a big, fight and he would have some emotional fallout from that especially a 12 year old kid so i like that they had they show some of his internal struggles still going on here with you know because he's a peaceful guy he doesn't want to fight and hurt people but he has this responsibility so i just like that they spent some time dealing with that and i also like that the show is acknowledging that the avatar state is really powerful and could be really useful in the war like he could basically just take out the fire nation if he could control it i'm glad they didn't just ignore that and not explain it away or anything and just be like oh but he wants to master the elements instead like, no, it's, we learn more about the Avatar state that he's actually the most vulnerable when he's doing that. And uh, things also tend to get out of hand and he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to fight the war that way. There's too much collateral damage. But a few smaller things I wanted to talk about. First of all, this is the first time we really see lightning bending, like other than what Iroh did before where he redirected the lightning, we see somebody actually who can who has full control of lightning, which is Azula, because she's a, an amazing firebending prodigy. She just uses lightning all the time. And we also get what I think is one of the funniest Sokka moments where uh, the, they've won the fight basically against the general, but he's still like trying to be like, we need to control your avatar state. And then Sokka just runs by on the ostrich thing and just hits him with his hammer thing and just knocks him out and he goes anybody got a problem with that and then all the all the earthbender soldiers are just like no oh, no that's fine <laughs> and then right at the end we get a really interesting scene that i remembered but it goes by really fast and there's no dialogue really or anything they don't explain the significance but you get the sense that there is some big significance to this this is where Zuko and Iroh cut their hair and like Zuko's ponytail and Iroh's top knot thing go floating down the river and this is after they've escaped Azula it's just a weird scene because it seems like a really really significant moment for their whole storyline where they are officially breaking with the Fire Nation and going off as fugitives doing their own thing and this is where Zuko's storyline starts to get really really interesting for me so I'm excited for these next episodes but that's all I've got for this episode the next one is the cave of two lovers it's a super weird episode but thanks so much for watching I will see you next time okay bye